Welcome back to Simbright Fashion Academy YouTube channel for another interesting tutorial. In this tutorial, I'll be teaching you how to sew this beautiful shoulder pleated booboo -boo cow kaftan. As you can see right there with front strips, you can see the strip is actually overlapping strip and it has a tight waist as well okay so this bubu kaftan is actually trending so you can have a pocket if you want as you can see i have my pockets right there and i have my strips as i desire we also have uh, other kinds of strips as the one you saw in the video you can go about it that way you can go about it overlapped okay so whichever way the main purpose of this tutorial is to teach you how to sew the half pleated shoulder cow kaftan okay so if this is what you want to learn i will encourage you to stay till the end of this tutorial to learn more so i'm actually making a mini kaftan right here so it's not it's just a short length and if you want to make use of a if you want to sew a longer length it means you make use of more than three yards of ankara so because I'm making a midi booboo kaftan, I'm using only three yards for it. So out of these three yards, you can see me opening it. So I'm going to fold first. The first fold I'm going to fold out of the three yards will be a fold at 25 inches. So you just go ahead and make the first fold at 25 inches inches so i will make it now so i'll take the measurement of my fold from this part and make sure i have it at 25 although i have at 26 here so i'll just make adjustments to make sure i have my first fold at 25 only 25 so i will make sure i have that 20 five even at the hem so it it will be straight okay so i have the 25 or 26 now so i will just cut out that 25 i'll just go ahead and separate it from the three yards so i'm separating it from the three yards okay this is my 25 inches on fold which is 50 inches all together so we are using just this one fold to cut out one piece and we'll place it on another the rest of the three yards and cut out the remaining piece so now the first measurement we are going to take right here is going to be our vertical measurement so but before that I love to make border lines at one one inch so this border line is going to st uh, serve as my starting line so make sure your border line is straight so it does not affect your cutting so this is my border line so i'm going to take my hip measurement so my hip measurement right here my hip length right here is 27 so i will just mark 27 inches as my hip length and i'm going to draw a straight line to it like this at 27 then after that i'm going to that is all for the uh, for the vertical line so i'm using the full length of this ankara to serve as my full length the next thing we are going to impute now is our horizontal measurement so we are imputing on the starting line from the center front center back line i'm going to take my shoulder measurement at eight inches i'm going to take five inches for the pleating uh, allowance and then i'm going to take 12 inches you can see 12 inches is going to be my sleeve 
with its allowance. So after taking that measurement, I'll come back to take the measurements on my hip line. So from the points I have here, the center front center back, I'll take my hip circumference divided by four. I have 12. Then I'm going to add four inches to my hip circumference divided by four. This will serve as ease and stitching allowance. After that, I'll come back to the neckline to connect my neck width. So my neck width for front and back is three inches. I'll mark. Neck depth for back is one inch. I'll mark. Then I'll go ahead and connect my neck line for the back. Remember, it's going to have a collar. So after marking that, we are going to mark our neck width for the front. So the neck width we are using for the front from the shoulder is 10 inches. I'll mark. From that point, I'll go in by one inch and mark. So because it's going to have an overlapping strip, just go in by one inch. So I'm going to connect that one inch like this to the three inches. And then I'm going to mark out the one one inch from the center front. I'll keep marking the one one inch to the end. So with my straight ruler, I'll come and connect from what from the one inch on the neckline. I'll take it all the way to the hem like this. Just take it all the way to the hem. Of course, you are going to cut out this part when the time comes. So we are done with the neckline for front and back, as you can see. So I believe you are seeing my chalk markings. So this is the neckline. So I'm just trying to highlight it so you'll be able to see it very, very well. All right. So after that, we'll go back to the sleeve. So the from the length of the sleeve that we have right here, I'm going to measure from this border line, which is the shoulder line. I'm going to take my sleeve measurement at eight, nine inches, including the stitching allowance. So from this nine inches, I'm going to come in by one inch. That is to fold for the sleeve fold. Then from this one inch, I'm going to come back to connect it to the hip. But before I connect to the hip, I'll make sure that what I have here on the hip plus the allowance of four inches, everything in total is 16. I'm going to take that 16 to the hem, as you can see. So from that folded center front, I'll mark. Then after I'm done marking, I'm going to connect from that point, a straight line to the hip. And once I get to the hip line, I'm going to come up by three inches. This is three inches. So I'll just go ahead and continue ruling this line up to three inches. And then I'm going to connect my normal cow connection. I'm taking this cow connection straight to the one inch. Can you see that? So I'm taking it all the way straight this way. Just make it straight. I'm trying to re recreate it. So I'll have enough cow fall right there. So at this point, please make sure you curve it this way. Of course, you know how we go about our cow uh, kaftan connection. So we are done right now. And this is what we have. So I'm going to only cut out the back neckline because we are going to place fold another the rest of the Ankara at 25 and place this on top of it. So just kindly go ahead and cut only the back neckline like this. 
can you see that so i've done that and i'm going to place it on the the rest of the ankara now here is the rest of my three yards of ankara and here i folded it at exactly 25 inches which we are working with so i'll just go ahead and place this on top of it the rest of the ankara like this so i'm going to arrange it very well because we are going to cut out the back right now so i'll quickly pin secure with my pin i'll just match it and secure them with my pin before i cut so now i've placed the the other ankara on top okay the one we marked on on top of the remaining three yards as you can see so i made sure everything is aligning very very well so i'm going to cut right now okay so i'm going to cut the neckline for the back so make sure the fold the front fold is uh, matching up very well so i'm i'm cutting the neckline for the back okay so i've cut out that part then the next we are going to cut is the cow so this is the sleeve so i'll just go in by that one inch and then take the shape of the cow So once I get here, just put the curve we know. Okay, so I'm going to use what I have here because this is what I have remaining out of the three years. So I'm going to use it to cut out my pocket. So I'll keep it aside. So here I have the front piece. So I'm going to take off the pins and separate the back. So this is the back caftan. I'll just go ahead and notch because we are going to place our collar on it. So once I separate it, I'll now go ahead and cut the front. So I'll just go here and cut the front. So make sure everything is matching up. Can you see? Everything is matching up before I cut. So I'll go ahead and cut. So once I get here, I'll just follow the one inch and I'll go down this way. Okay, so this is the front and this is the back okay so this is what the shape of your caftan is going to look like can you see that so that is the shape we have right there so we'll go ahead now to join the shoulders then cut out and join the pockets and we we'll proceed to the sewing of the strips Right now I'm going to place my notch where I'm going to sew my pocket and you can see the pieces I kept for the pocket. I have four pieces of them. I'll come down by one inch and measure seven inches and cut out my pocket as you can see. So here I'm going to place the pockets on the notch I made and stitch at 0 0.5 inch then trim out the excess beside it. I'm going to join the shoulder lines together. I'll place them together and join both. I'm done joining the neckline to the sleeve and i gave it a good press so i also did the same for this so you can see this is the uh, neckline for the back and that is the neckline for the front so now it's time for us to start up the business of this tutorial which is the pleated shoulder pattern so for this pleated shoulder pattern you can see i'm turning to the wrong side 
so we've already taken three inches as our neckline you remember we cut at three inches so i placed my tape at that three inches and i'm going to take the measurement of the completion of my shoulder so the completion of my shoulder was at eight inches i'm going to mark my eight inches and from that 8 inches, I'm going to mark the pleating allowance we added. This is it, 5 inches. So, I'm going to get the midpoint of this 5 inches, which is 2 and half. So, this is the point of interest now, this 2 and half. You can see this line is the point of interest. So, I'm going to pick it up this way on the wrong side. And I'm going to fold it like this. So I'll just secure it with my pin. So just make a straight fold. Can you see that? Just make a straight fold from that mid point and take it to the end. So I'll secure with my pin and I'll make sure this fold is straight okay so make sure it's straight arrange your fabric very well on the hem and make sure you do this on a flat surface you can see what i'm doing so at that midpoint so if you notice that it's not at the midpoint push it to the midpoint that is the only way we get this can you see so now from what I have here from this point, you can see I've gotten this point right now. So I'm going to secure them with my pin. So I'll go ahead and secure them with my pin accordingly. So I'll just pin, pin, and pin to the end. So you make sure that this line matches up. That is the only way you know is on the straight line. So you just go ahead and pin and cross check. Okay, so I'm cross checking. So for the other parts, I'll just take the measurement of what I have from here to here, five and a half. I'll just go over to the hem of this other part and also measure the five and a half because they have to be equal. So this is five and a half. I'll push it a little to five and a half. So I'm just giving you a guide on how to get this straight line. Can you see that? So you make the adjustment and also secure with your pin. So I'll go ahead and secure with my pins once again at that point. So whatever I do to this one-sided pleats, I'm going to also do to the other side, okay? So this is the one side where we have the pleats. So I'll go back to my ironing table now. I'm going to iron out, making a crease line to it. So I'm going to iron it. Let me do And if you look well, you can see I have my crease line. So I'll just open it up, still on the wrong side. So I am seeing my crease line. If you look well, you can see the line, okay? So from that crease line, your iron made for you right there. You are going to come in with your hair stay. So you can see the hair stay. So this hair stay measures 34 inches by length because my waist is 17. So this split is going to stop at 17 and Double of it is 34. So that's how I got the length of this hair stay at 34. So this is the rough side of the hair stay. I'll just put it together to get the midpoint because it has to be equal. So here is my midpoint. I'll just open up this midpoint, place it on the crease line at the middle like this. I believe you understand. So the width of what I have here, the width of what I have here is 5 inches. Note that the pleating is 5 inches. That was what we measured from here to here. My hair stay is 5 inches and I place it exactly at the crease line at the middle. So after doing that, 
The next thing I will do is to come in with my iron and I'm going to iron it nicely. Okay, so just go ahead and iron it nicely. So once you iron it, definitely it's going to stick on the dress. So here I've ironed it out starting from the midline and it's stuck to the wrong side of the dress. So remember that we still have our crease line. Now we are going to turn this to the front once again. So that is where we are going to mark out the pleating. So I just go ahead and fold it following the crease line. See, I can see my crease line. So this time around, I'm pushing this crease line from the end, arranging it just like we did before, making sure we have it this time around at the front. So I'll do that and secure with my pin just like we did before. So let me do that. So now I just turned it to the right side, okay? And I've already pinned down on that crease line. So, but for you to be sure that you have this exactly, because we've ironed our hair stay on it, this is the neckline. Just come back again and place your tape at that three inches. After which, because we've cut out three inches of our neckline, then you mark your shoulder, which we had at eight inches, and the remaining should be two and a half. Can you see that? So that is the center crease line. We have it at two and half. So that is correct. So I, I now folded from that two and half because my hair stay is quite inside there. And I made sure I have it pinned all the way to the crease line, okay, which I made. So now this is the center shoulder line. The first thing you do is to place your tape on that shoulder line and measure your waist line. My waistline here is at 17. I'll come back from that other point, shoulder, and measure my waistline at 17 once again. Can you see that? Now, from this point, I'll start measuring two and a half, which when multiplied by two is the five inches we added. So these two and a half are marking now. I'm going to rule a straight line to it, and that is where I'm going to have my stitches. So I'm marking the two and a half all the way from one end to the other. And then I'll come back with mine. So just pin this way on that line because we are going to stitch across our pin. So I'll now mark a straight line. So this straight line I'm marking, I'm following my stitches along that straight line. And I'm going to stop exactly at my 17 inches. So I'll just top stitch here, uh, back stitch there, and I'll just back stitch there. Okay. So I'll go back to my machine now. I'm going to sew across my pins, across my pins. I'm done with my uh, pleats, my shoulder pleats. So this is the sleeve, as you can see. So now I put the two together. That's the neckline. This is center back where I made my notch. We want to sew the strip right now. So I will make sure I adjust the shoulder to shoulder and take the measurement of my strip. I know most of us are familiar with this uh, strip sewing. I have a lot of them on my channel. So you can go ahead and check on them. But what we are making here is an overlapping. I'm going to take the measurement of my strip length from the center back like this. I'll go ahead and take it gently like this. So I'll take it all the way to the end. So here I have 49 inches. So I got 49 inches. So I'm going to multiply, add one inch to my 49, which is 50. So 50 multiplied by 2 will give us 100. 
So I'll come up with my strip. So your strip can be anything. You can use any plain fabric, but I'm using a showcase. As you may see, Ashoke is actually trending for front slit and slits. So here, my Ashoke is on fold. And then, when on fold, I have three inches when on fold. Can you see that? So you can go ahead and get your Ashoke. You can also open up your Ashoke and Heste, but I don't want to Heste this because. We are making an overlap so it's still going to overlap each other so i don't want it that thick so it's all your choice if you want to hair stay so here i've already measured my ashoke length at 100 inches okay so you can see how long it is at 100 inches so i'll just go ahead and fold it into two equal parts right now because i'm going to go ahead to sew the ashoke on the neckline so here is the mid neck line where the collar is going to start i make my notch to it so i'll go ahead and sew this so if you are following the method uh, of the over overlap you will follow exactly this method for your strip but if you want to follow the method you have on the video, I'll be linking how to sew that strip you see on the video on the description box below in case you want to make your strip double. But we are making overlap right here. So here is my center back. I'll simply place my center back to the Ashoke. I will run from here to the end. I'll stitch from here to the end. Let me do that. After attaching the Ashoke or whatever fabric of your choice you wish to use for this, it can be plain, it can even be the same Ankara fabric, it can be whatever fabric you wish to work with. From the shoulder, I'm going to take the measurement of 12 inches. So here I've already marked out my neckline on the point I want to overlap. So there are so many methods you can sew your strip. You can use the method we know. I have a lot of them on the channel right here. Okay, if you want to the method of closing this way and having double strip, you can check out on the description box below. I'll be dropping the link on the description box. Then if you want to follow the method you are following right now, just go ahead and mark out 12 inches from the shoulder line. And from the hem line, you will start overlapping it. So I'll just go ahead and start securing it with my pin from the hem. You can see how I'm overlapping it. It depends on the side you want to overlap. So for me, I want the right to overlap the left side. So I'll just keep overlapping it, securing with my pin till I get to that 12 inches mark. So you can see how I'm stretching my fabric. Because I'm going to top stitch right on top of it right now. So I'll just go ahead and pin on the point of that 12 inches. So this is the line of my 12 inches I'll pin. So I'm going to top stitch right here. I'll just go ahead and top stitch very, very close to the end. You can also top stitch at this end to hold it down appropriately. So let me do that. So right now I'm done to stitching to the 12 inches line. So I just top stitch on one side and I left a slit of about 9 to 8 inches. Okay, I'm done hemming my slim. So I'm going to put it together right now and I'm going to stitch at 0 0.5 inch. So I'll stitch as I'm stitching, I'm arranging this part so i'll just start from here 0 0.5 and once i get to the cow i'll go in and sew the cow match up the pocket and sew the pocket the usual way and then go to the end like this so i'll just go ahead and pin my pocket and my cow and stitch up so this is what it looks on the inside after i'm done sewing you can see i i came in a little before i stitched so that is how you are going to sew 
this pocket thing is optional okay if you wish to put a pocket because it's actually very very down from where it is so instead of putting a pocket here i will advise you curve your cow up to the pocket point okay just below your your hip line so you have enough cow effect of course you know how to go about the cow the main purpose of this tutorial is the shoulder pleated design so you can see where i have my hair stay so the next thing i'm going to do now is to sew we i want it to have a tight waist so before closing this i'm supposed to actually add my belt before closing but since i've already closed it i wouldn't like to go and losing it again so please before you you close just come over to this point i stop my stitching and attach your what your belt so your belt can be as long as you wish so i just pick up this part this pleated part you can see i stopped there and i'm going to stitch my belt so this belt i have can be as long as you wish to uh, do that so the right way to sew this belt is just go ahead and sew and turn but i don't want to do that now as i'm running out of time so i'm going to stitch this like this i'm going to just top stitch right here we have so many ways of sewing it just to attach the belt so i can go ahead and top stitch on top of it like this then i'll also or instead of sewing it there you can just find a okay so i just shifted the uh, the pleat that way so just go ahead and do this turn it this way okay just turn this way can you see just on the fabric turn to the fabric and top stitch on it like this then you come also close to the fabric like this and place it and top stitch so by the time you tie it you have the uh, tight waist so let me go and do that uh, I have already attached my my belt so like I said you can go ahead and sew your belt the right way so once I wear this dress right now just put in my hand inside the dress and tie it on my waistline can you see that this is actually optional if you want you can put the belt if you don't want you can also leave it okay if you want you can remove the the pocket and extend your cow uh, down to the hip or below the hip any which way so i'm going to hem the damn piece of this dress and that is how we'll come to the end of this tutorial so i believe this class was helpful to you so if you are new to this channel please kindly subscribe turn on your notification bell to receive videos like this every day like this video share to family and friends drop your comment on the comment section and your suggestions as well thank you once again and see you in the next class bye